we are going to turn my old computer into a network attached storage device. This computer I have here has been around five or six years and it has been working well. Now, since nobody is using it here at my place, I decided to make use of it as a network attached storage device. In this video, I'm going to walk you through how I'm going to do it. So if you have an old computer and you want to use it as a network attached storage device, then you can do it. Let's start. Okay, first off guys, you need to download an operating system called Freenas. It is the world's number one storage operating system over um, 10 million downloads. Now take note here, if you are downloading a free NAS, make sure that you are not downloading the pre-release version like what happened to me. Okay, so you check out the current stable version. As of this recording, the stable version is 11.2. So you download that one, I'll put the link on the description below. Because if you try to visit the free NAS website, the direct download that you're going to see right away is the pre-release version of 11.3 as of the recording of this video okay so what i have here it's downloading it depends on how fast your internet will be and we're just going to wait up for this download to finish up and then we can continue to the next step now it's done guys i'll just open up rufus a very simple tool creating a bootable device make sure your usb stick is plugged in I'll go ahead and select the FreeNAS operating system. This is the stable version. And then go ahead and click start. This will wipe all the data and then it will write FreeNAS into your USB stick. I usually use Ventoy software to create bootable disk because it's very easy. You just copy and paste the operating system to the USB stick you made bootable. But in this video to make it quick, we'll just use Rufus. So if you want to check out Ventoy, go ahead. I'll put a link on the description below so that you can check that one out as well as my video about Ventoy. So let's wait up for this one to finish again. It will take around five minutes to write this one into a stick. I just did a quick fast forward. Now it's done. Let's go ahead, unplug this one and get ready for the next step. So here's what I'm going to do guys. I have a two terabyte HDD. This would be the storage disk that will be used on my computer. It's only one, but if you want to add more drives into your NAS, then you can add it into your computer as long as you have the SATA ports available for you. Okay, since we are going to use FreeNAS, the requirement for FreeNAS is that you need to have a dedicated drive for your operating system. Since this would be the storage disk, we need another USB stick where we can install FreeNAS. And the second USB stick is the bootable device where we just created a while back. We created the FreeNAS installer on this USB stick. We're going to boot from this device and install it into this USB stick. After installing that one, we can remove the installer USB stick. We need to leave this USB stick plugged into our computer because that's where the FreeNAS is going to boot up. Uh, so I'm going to install this hard drive inside this computer and then we can start um, doing our installation, okay? So this USB stick, as I mentioned earlier, would be where we are going to install that operating system of FreeNAS. Okay, so the next thing we need to do, guys, is plug this one to our network. Since it will be a network Apache storage after the installation, it will grab an IP address from our router and then we would be able to configure it, okay? I'm going to prep this. Plug in our USB stick that we can use to install FreeNAS. Then get ready for installation. That's our monitor. Power this one on. So I'm just go ahead and press F9 to boot from this computer. There you go. Boot menu should show up. We have uh, the first drive as our two terabyte HDD. We have the Sony where we are going to use to install FreeNAS going to our SanDisk here. So I'm just going to boot from the Sony USB stick. Press enter. This will boot up. And boot FreeNAS installer, press enter. It will take time, about three or four seconds. And then another three or four seconds here to load up the operating system that we can install. And then of course we have install upgrade. We're just going to hit enter. And then this computer has less than the recommended eight gigabytes of RAM. Um, four gigabytes of RAM is enough for us. Let's just go ahead and go for yes, press enter. And then 
Um, we, we got to choose where we are going to install the operating system. Uh, we are not going to install it here. This is our storage device. We are going to install it to our SanDisk. So I'm just going to press spacebar to select this option and then go ahead and press enter. It will erase all partitions. It's okay. Installing on a flash media is preferred like what we're doing rather than installing on a hard drive. So if you still don't want to use a flash drive, you can use SSD or an HDD, but it would be a bit a waste of space. Okay, so I'll just go ahead and proceed yes. And then I'm going to go for my password. I'll just make it simple and then I'll change it later on. Okay, press enter. And then it is recommended that we use um, BIOS mode. So I'll just go ahead and press enter. And then it will go ahead and uh, install the operating system. So we'll just wait for it. Now, um, this process will take around five to 10 minutes. So what I'm going to do here, guys, is um, I'm going to post the video. Uh, you can post that one as well, and then we'll get back if there's something that we need to go through. So as of now, I'm just going to go ahead and pose it, okay? So what up? So that went to 100%. We're going to the Second, that is 100%. Third, that's 100%. And we're in the fourth stage, that is another 100%. Okay. We're still going on. So it detected that we have a link on our um, Ethernet adapter. Prenas installation on DA1 succeeded. Please reboot and remove installation media. So I'll just go ahead and uh, press OK. So reboot system. Uh, let's wait for it to boot up. It should go. There you go. Okay, so it's booting up from our USB stick. We have two drives. It will count to five seconds down and it will boot up for the first time after the installation. Okay. We're doing good. So we're getting an IP address from my router. We have, I guess we have got an IP address that is 192.168.1.40. So I'll wait for that to finish up. Starting, okay, there you go, we're done. So uh, today is May 16. Good date, you got it there. And console setup. So uh, after this one, guys, we can remove the monitor and keyboard. We are going to access this Freenas via the IP address that is given to this Freenas from our router. So we're going to dial 192.168.1.40. So that's it. Let's go jump into my computer and access this Freenas. Uh, do the basic configuration so that we can use it right away, okay? I'll open my browser with 192.168.1.40 Okay And this is the login um, You need to put in your password. So uh, this is the password we type in a while back Okay, login so this is the dashboard that we get from Freenas. A uh, quick uh, overview of the computer that you are using, um, graphic reports, some sort of those things. Now the first thing we need to do, since I am using um, Windows machines here, um, I'll be doing a window share with Freenas. But first I'm going to go to accounts and I always like creating a group. So I just want to add a group here so that it's easier if you want to give permissions you just um, add it to the group so that it will be easier. So I'll just go ahead and uh, create a group. I'll just leave that GID the same. Um, put the name here like um, home users. Uh, leave that one unchecked, unchecked and I'll go ahead and save this. And the next thing I'm going to do is create uh, users. 
so when I create users I'll just uh, put them under the group of home users I'll create add and then uh, Torogi Pro Torogi um, Pro username let's say T Pro that would be good uh, uh, that would be okay I'll just go ahead and go T Pro Pro at gmail.com um, that com okay so this is not an existent email uh, I'll just change the one if I want to later on I'll just go ahead and put a simple password um, probably change it later on um, I'll just leave it like that a uh, new primary group um, I'll remove that because we have a group already I'll just go ahead and go for home users this is the group I created earlier and um, since I'll be using this account I'll just go yeah directories yep and yeah let's go ahead and permit sudo okay so let's just go ahead and save this user so if you want to add more users you just go ahead and add okay so after creating an account uh, we can go ahead and create um, uh, storage pools let's just go ahead and go for storage and then click pools now here in the pools we didn't have so I'll just go ahead and add and go ahead and create new pool create new pool and then what will be the name of this pool I'll just uh, since I'll be using it here and I haven't decided what are the things that I'm going to put in here so for now for the sake of this demo I'll just go ahead and let's say um, uh, shared files and uh, encryption I don't need to encrypt this you get to select the disk that you're going to use so if you have uh, more than one uh, it will be listed here but we only have um, the disk that I have showed you earlier that is 1.82 terabytes that is available to you so I'll just go ahead and click this then move that over to the other side and then you get to uh, click create then the contents of all the other disk will be erased um, yeah let's go ahead and confirm uh, we don't need anything inside the disk already create pool so once we're done here in the three dots click that and then you go to edit permissions on the edit permissions you can see that this um, directory belong to root user you can basically give this one to tpro that is the user that we used it's much better if we apply it to a group so let's go ahead and put it to home users so we apply this one this is what I meant when I created a group every time we want someone to access the files inside a shared files then we add them to the group of home users so I'll just select that one and save now that's done so the next thing we need to do is uh, do the sharing things what I'm going to use this for is for Windows shares so click on Windows SMB shares I'll just go ahead and add and then here in the path just click on path here and uh, this um, icon will come out click that one and then you will have shared files here so we're going to share this so once you're done guys there are a bit of advanced things here but we're not going to uh, get into those things let's just go ahead and save this one then enable service yes we're going to enable service okay okay so basically we're, we're we're done with this and what I'm going to do is get into my laptop right now and try to check if we have that shared files that we created with FreeNAS so I'll just minimize this here on my computer uh, you go to your file explorer here and then type in slash slash 192 the 168 the 1 the 40 this is the IP address of your FreeNAS or your server just go ahead and press enter and you will have your shared files here so if you try to open this then it will ask for a username and password so our username a while back was tpro and the password and then ok so we can access this file and so that I'll not be going back here and typing 192.168.1.40 I'll just go ahead and map that drive so I'll just go and click that you can select what letter you want to use here I'll just use uh, drive X and I'll go ahead and browse network there you go yeah browse this dude here and 
do it like that okay shared files so browse and then you'll have network and then you can browse that finish then you will have it on this PC it should be here you can see it here so you can open that and then and then we can create a um, file here okay so go ahead and type in Torogi Pro and we can basically create some um, files so text file test there you go and that's about it guys so if there's anything I can help you with just comment down below let me know what what are your issues setting up your free NAS and um, I'll help you out now if you're starting to learn about free NAS um, I'm not very well into free NAS I just started using this one like a couple months ago and I've seen that it has a lot of functions so um, if you have any questions just let me know and maybe I can help you out so once again this is Story Pro and I thank you for watching goodbye